Hello, evening everyone. Um, thanks for everyone for joining us today for this HS education programme. Um, it's lovely to have so many of you join. Just let you all know that um, we it's completely anonymous, so we can't see who exactly has joined. And also for the webinar, it says that um, recording is in progress, but this is just for our own internal review process and won't be shared in any way at all. Um, so just a few housekeeping rules. Uh, this programme is developed to share information about HS, how we can look after HS, also new treatments and surgical options that are available. Um, there'll be three speakers today and I'll introduce each speaker as we go along, one of them is myself. Um, because we all work in the NHS in the UK, our talks will be NHS and UK focused. Um, please don't record or take photographs of any of the sections of the event. And just in the surgical talk, there, um, there might be some photographs um, that some people may find triggering. Um, so just when it comes to the surgical talk, um, if that may be the case, um, just to be aware of that. Um, if you want to ask any questions, then please do so via the Q&A function, not the chat function. Um, and then at the end, we'll do our very best to answer as many questions as possible. And um, we've got a great panel at the end, which is the three speakers, and then also um, a, a pharmacist, our psychologist in clinic, and one of our nurse specialists um, that's in the HS service with us. Um, after the event, um, you will get a link to um, provide your feedback. Um, it will come up on the screen and also you'll be emailed a link. It's really great to have as much feedback as possible so that we can improve this for further educational events um, down the line. Um, I think that's everything for the housekeeping rules. So um, I'll just introduce the first speaker. So Dr. Mia Stain is a consultant dermatologist who has a special interest in hydradnitis superativa. Uh, she does the tertiary HS service um, here at Guy's and St Thomas's and St John's Institute of Dermatology and she will talk to us today about how to look after our HS and also any self-care tips um, that can hopefully help the HS community. Thank you Ellie. Um, so yes, as Ellie said, my name is Mia. I'm a consultant dermatologist here in St. John's. And I'm going to talk to you today about HS and thinking briefly about, oh, let's just make sure it's actually moving ahead. There we go. Um, we'll talk briefly about diagnosing the condition and we'll go over some treatment goals that you may have in the treatment of HS and then I'm going to be focusing my section of the talk on the kind of non-medication aspects of management and my colleagues later today will talk about surgical and medical management so mine will be non-medication management and just before we go on I really want to caveat this by saying HS and the management of HS really should take into account the enormous impact um, that the condition has on really every aspect of your life. Um, and so a holistic approach is absolutely crucial. And so not everything that you will need in the management of your HS will be covered in this talk. Um, and I just wanted to say that straight away. And maybe we can touch on some of those points later in our panel discussion. So I'm going to start with could this be HS? And the reason for starting with this is I realize that many people listening today will already have a diagnosis of HS. So you perhaps don't need to be told how to diagnose HS. But we know from um, what patients tell us and from research being done that there is often a very big delay between the first onset of symptoms and when a patient is given their diagnosis of HS. So one study done in the United States, this was about 7.7 .7 years. And so I thought perhaps there may be people listening today who have symptoms and who suspect that they might have HS. Um, and so really this is for you that I'm just going through this bit. So HS or hydrodenitis superativa is a clinical diagnosis. And what that means is we don't have a specific blood test or scan to diagnose this condition. So you really have to base your diagnosis on what the patient tells you as a doctor and what you find on physical examination. And so you need three criteria to diagnose HS. You need typical lesions, 
in a typical distribution and it needs to be chronic and recurrent. By that we mean at least two flares in a six month period. And I'm going to go through these typical lesions step by step. So the first one is a comedone, more commonly known as a blackhead. So blackheads can be singular or they can be bridged where two little comedones are kind of linked to each other. Abscesses are tender, swollen lesions that are usually filled with pus. Um, they can resolve spontaneously. Sometimes they may need a course of oral antibiotics to settle, and sometimes they may even need surgical management to be treated. A nodule is another very common feature in HS, and this really is a solid round bump, typically more than a centimeter in size, and it can either be inflamed, by which we mean really tender, swollen and red, or non-inflamed, non in which it's kind of non-tender and more at its baseline state. Um, scarring is a key feature, and scarring is irreversible tissue damage due to inflammatory HS lesions. And as you will know, scarring can be flat, it can be dipped, it can be raised or rope-like. Then sinus tracts are also sometimes called tunnels or fistulas, and really this is just a little tunnel underneath the skin which may open on one or both sides of the skin um, and may be draining, meaning if you were to press on it, um, some discharge may come out, or a non-draining tunnel. And whilst ulcers aren't within our key uh, diagnostic features, I've included them here because often our patients with HS will have open sores or breaks in the skin. So these are the typical lesions, the first thing you need to diagnose the condition. The second thing is typical distribution. And so this is typically in the skin folds. In our female patients, we find that this occurs more in the frontal part of the body, so underneath the breasts, underneath the arms, and in the groin area. Um, it can also, of course, be around the buttocks and the perianal area, and we often see this more in men. And then it has to be at least two flares in a six-month period. So now you have your diagnosis of HS. I'm briefly going to touch on some treatment goals that you may consider when treating HS. So as you probably know already, HS does not have a cure, but we can work at reducing the impact it has on your life in several ways. So perhaps a realistic treatment goal may be that you want to deal with the physical symptoms, the pain, the itch, or the discharge associated with a condition. Your treatment goal may be that you want to reduce the intensity or the frequency of your flares. You may want removal of scarred tissue or tunnels, and that will typically be with surgery, which we'll talk about later. Um, your treatment goal might be, listen, I don't want to be on medication all the time. I would like something that works quickly, that I take for a short period of time to deal with a flare, and then I would like to stop. Or your treatment goal may be, I want to be on something every day, that will control my disease, whether it is active or whether it's inactive. So different goals, different kinds of treatments. Um, your treatment goal might be to deal with associated mood or mental health concerns, or you may just want to improve your general health. And for each and every one of you listening, um, your treatment goals will be different. Um, it may be one or a combination or all of these, and it will change as your disease changes and it's important to communicate your personal treatment goals with your healthcare professional so that we can come up with a plan that works for you. Now, I'm going to talk about self-care and what you can do. And I'm going to start with lifestyle changes. And I specifically wanted to start with this because I think perhaps a lot of people have had a negative experience of, be, of, of lifestyle changes. Um, a lot of our patients come to us and say, oh, I was told, yes, this is HS, lose weight, stop smoking, go away, um, which is obviously not helpful. Um, and so I thought I would try and address some of the myths and the misconceptions around how much lifestyle changes can help you in HS. So we'll start with diet and weight loss. So we know that excess weight contributes to increase HS symptoms. It is not the cause of why you have HS, but we know that carrying extra fatty tissue causes increased inflammatory hormones in the body, which can worsen your HS symptoms. So you can think of carrying extra fatty tissue as a, as a biologically active organ and not just inert fatty tissues. We also know that aside from its 
inflammatory role, fatty tissue also has a mechanical role. So with increased fatty tissue, um, you can have increased friction, which we know can worsen HS. So what people then often ask is, well, will weight loss cure my HS? Um, and the answer is no, weight loss on its own um, will not cure your disease. But weight management can be used together with other lifestyle modifications and medications and surgery to give you a far better control of your condition. Um, and then exercise kind of goes hand in hand with this. And I know exercise is tricky because we know the benefits of exercise. Um, it can help you lose weight if needed. It can boost your mood. It can improve your overall health. But it's tricky in um, people with HS because exercise typically is hot, sweaty and leads to friction all things that make HS worse. Um, and so it can be hard to find an exercise routine that works for you. Generally, things that are low impact and low intensity tend to be better tolerated. So swimming, Pilates or yoga, walking, but you will need to find what works for you. Um, and then finally, stop smoking. So again, this is not the reason you have HS, but when inhaled, the um, ingredients from tobacco products trigger inflammation within the body, which worsens your HS. And um, it also definitely prolongs wound healing after surgery. Um, so we recommend all people uh, stop smoking. Um, and this specifically pertains to the NHS. So if you're listening from outside the UK, it may not be as relevant to you. But if we think of weight loss, diet and exercise, there are a number of resources you can access within the NHS. Um, there is a specific concept called the Tier 3 Weight Management Service, which is something your GP or healthcare provider can refer you to if you have a BMI of more than 50 or a BMI of somewhere between 35 and 49, but with other associated health problems, which could include HS. The NHS Live Well website also has enormous amounts of information about healthy living, um, where to find extra help, self-health tips, and can be a very useful resource. And it's, of course, completely free of charge. And then finally, um, if you do want to stop smoking, your GP, your pharmacist, your health visitor can all refer you to an official stop um, smoking cessation program. And you can also refer yourself via the NHS Live Well website. So now I'm going to move on to a couple of other self-care tips and uh, strategies. Just want to keep an eye on my time, I'm okay. Um, so clothing, we know HS is worsened by friction. So our general recommendation is that you want to keep your clothing light and breathable um, to help um, control your body heat, control sweating. And really that in practice means you want to choose fabrics made of cotton, lyocell or bamboo fiber, and you want to wear loose, comfortable clothing that won't rub against the skin. That may also include changing um, the kinds of underwear that you wear. Hair removal is a personal choice and you can choose to remove your hair or not. If you do choose to remove your hair, you may find though that shaving and waxing could aggravate your HS and it's definitely something you want to avoid during a flare. If you want to shave, make sure your razor is new, sharp, and that you change it every four to eight weeks so you're not trying to shave with a blunt razor because that will increase the skin trauma. Um, another option is something like laser hair removal. So in laser hair removal, there is high intensity light that destroys the hair follicles. So this is a semi-permanent to permanent way of removing hair. And there is some evidence that it could also be beneficial in the treatment of HS. Now, this is not something we can prescribe on the NHS at the moment. And then I'll talk about general skin care tips. So in general, we always advise, avoid, um, um, advise you to avoid fragrances. Uh, things like washcloths and brushes should really be avoided. Um, they're a bit too harsh, they can cause trauma, and they can also be a source of bacterial contamination. We recommend all our patients use a regular antiseptic wash, such as Octanizan. Now we know that HS is not an infection, it's not contagious, and it's not caused by bacteria, but in skin that is already compromised with lots of open wounds, secondary bacterial colonization can be a problem. And so it can be beneficial to use a regular antiseptic wash. We find octenizan is less harsh than hibiscrap, but you can use whichever one works for you. Deodorants, similarly, very personal choice. There's no specific recommendation of what to use and what to avoid. You may find that a spray 
is easier to tolerate than a roll on or a stick, but you can use whatever works for you. And then I'll just talk a little bit about bathing regimens because that can be helpful for um, for some patients. So really here we're talking about a cleansing bath, a bleach bath, or even a, an Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate of soak. Um, and so what you would do is you would choose pure bleach without any fragrance or soap. The most frequently used is molten, um, but you could, use, you could use any of the ones listed. You would run your bath to your preferred temperature. Don't use bubble bath or soap. You'd add half a cup of your bleach solution with at least 10 centimeter depth of water. You want to soak yourself all over for about 10 to 15 minutes. You can use your normal wash or emollient cream in the bath. Um, you can wet your face and your hair. Um, obviously, don't drink the water. And then afterwards, rinse with plain water, gently pat dry and moisturize as usual. And you don't want to be doing this more than twice per week. And then in the last couple of minutes I have left, I'll briefly touch on dressings. Um, we have uh, Deborah, our nurse, nurse specialist on the line, who's an absolute expert in this. So please do ask her your questions afterwards. But in brief, there is no single dressing that is perfect for all HS lesions in all HS patients, because your lesions and your wound care needs will change over time. But some specific things you could consider might be um, the cost, how absorbent something is, how sticky it is, how adhesive, and how easy it is to mold to these tricky body sites. So some low cost, easy to source options may include gauze, menstrual pads, or diapers. So they're easy to find, they're cheap, they're pretty absorbent, but they're not very comfortable and they can be quite bulky to use and hard to keep in place. Then there are also things like non-adherent dressings, like these abdominal pads or non-adherent pads. And they're great because they're very absorbent and they're gentle on wounds because they're not particularly sticky, but again, bulky, hard to keep in place, and they can be a little bit more expensive. You could then opt for a slightly more advanced dressing, which contains a bit of hydrofiber, such as Aquacel. So hydrofiber expands and really absorbs all that exudate. So it's great for very discharging wounds, but it's very absorbent. You could try something like the Aquacel AG, which means there's added silver, which helps as an antiseptic. Um, but they're hard to get. Um, you may often find that they're out of stock and they can be more expensive. Calcium alginate dressings are a similar kind of thing, very absorbent, very useful if you have bleeding wounds, um, but they can break down easily and make for quite painful dressing changes. And then the last kind of category of dressings we often use are foam dressings, so either silicone or Mepilex Border Light, we use that a lot, um, and they're great because they're absorbent, they're soft, they're not particularly adhesive, just adhesive enough to keep in place, and they're easy to fit in the folds, um, but they can be hard to get and they're expensive. And then my last minute, I'll just briefly touch on HydraWare. Um, HydraWare is a custom made dressing system specifically for HS. And it consists of two parts. There's a garment that you wear like a cycle short or a, like a training bra. Um, and there are little slots in which you can slide your absorbent dressings. So you don't have dressings stuck to your skin. Um, it is available on prescription within the NHS um, and it may be useful for some people. So, that's the end of my time. In summary, we know there's a lack of effective treatment options available for the treatment of HS, and really multidisciplinary working is absolutely invaluable. So you can see your health care team as partners in your HS journey. We would like to help you to make the most of the treatments available. And often combining approaches will give you the best outcome. So combining surgery or weight loss or smoking cessation, different ways of controlling pain, different ways of treating hair removal with the more traditional medical treatments, which we'll touch on later. Um, and this is a landscape that is bound to change in the coming years. So hopefully, as um, Dr. Sheed will speak about later as well, there are some new um, treatments on the horizon that will be a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you. Nia, thank you so much 